Hello, my lovely YouTubers. So in this video, I am going to show you everything that I got from Redlands Orchid Festival, which is one of the largest orchid festivals on the Eastern Seaboard. And I didn't actually get to go because Redlands Festival was during the time that I was in Europe. And I was super, super bummed because obviously it's an orchid festival. And I think something like 50 vendors from all over the world attend Redlands every single year. So it does happen every year. And I'm hoping come hell or high water, I will be there next year uh, because it is quite the sight to behold. And of course, you get awesome, awesome plants that you can't normally get in the US. So orchid nurseries from Brazil and Japan, they all come to Redlands to sell their orchids. And unfortunately, that's really the only time that you can get plants from international vendors because otherwise you would have to pay for sites and phytosanitary certification. And that's actually really, really expensive now. I don't know what changed, but... I was looking at some of the international grower websites and they were wanting like a $500 minimum order. So unfortunately you really only get one chance to, um, well, if you live on the Eastern seaboard like me, there's really only Redlands or I think there's also the one up in Pennsylvania. What is that? SIPOS, Southeastern Pennsylvania Orchid Society. Yeah. So SIPOS and Redlands, I think are the only ones that you can get like that kind of international selection. So I was not able to attend Redlands, but one of my club members from my society, she was really, really sweet. And she was like, oh, I'll go pick up your order for you after I begged her, of course. <laughs> but anyways, so I got her to pick up my order. I ordered through Bella Vista Orchids. They are based out of Brazil. And when I was looking at their website, they had a ton of catacetums. And I was really disappointed this year because I tried ordering from Rare Earth Orchids. If you guys remember my video from last year, I made a huge order with him. And unfortunately, he did like a first come first serve basis because he had so many people wanting his catacetums. You can see like why there needs to be more catacetum vendors. I mean, really there's only like Sunset Valley orchids and him if you want new and different kinds of catacetums. So anyways, I placed an order, but it didn't end up going through because I was too slow basically the early bird gets the worm so i was not early and i didn't get any worms so i was really disappointed and then bella vista came along and they have so so many catacetums that i just went in i went insane and i got so many um i also got a few that are not catacetums and i will be showing those as well so let's get into it the first one that i got is catlia nobilior I first saw this orchid when I was watching one of Crooked Orchids videos. If you guys know Anna over at Crooked Orchids, go check out her channel. Uh, but she got a Catlia Nobilior for free. And I was like, oh, I haven't heard of Nobilior. Let me look at it. And it was a really pretty flower. And I was like, oh my gosh. And that's so cool that they have the spikes that come from the base. So... I was like, yeah, let me find one of these nobiliors. Turns out they're actually really hard to find. And it's good that I waited though, because I was going to purchase a nobilior um, from an eBay vendor. But then somebody was telling me that nobiliors are one of those that you really want to purchase a quality one. And they said either go with H&R Nurseries based out of Hawaii or purchase from an international vendor. Uh, I decided to purchase from Bella Vista Orchids. This was the most expensive one that I purchased. It was $40. And it is blooming size, but it's quite small. I mean, it only has four pseudobulbs. So it has four pseudobulbs, and three of those have leaves. Foliage. Did I say that right? Foliage? Yeah. You guys are making fun of me for saying foliage. I don't know. Do I say it weird? Maybe it's my accent. I don't know. It was really funny. Over in Scotland, they they loved it when I talked with my fake southern accent. Um, I always do like Forrest Gump impersonations. 
Mama says these are my magic shoes. Mama says they take me anywhere. And they were like loving every minute of it. So maybe it's my accent. I don't think that I have a Southern accent, but apparently I do. So if I say foliage or foliage or whatever, I'm talking about the leaves, these green things. So the next one that I got is another one that I've been wanting and I looked for a really long time. Of course, when I first saw these for sale, I didn't want any. I said, oh, I'll just put it off and put it off. I'll wait. And then when I actually was like ready to purchase one, I couldn't find any of them anywhere. And then I saw them on Bella Vista's site and I was like, oh, that's the one that I've been wanting. So I ended up getting it. It is a Catlia Rex. So it's really weird. These aren't hard to find, but for some reason, and that always happens to me. I don't know if it happens to you guys as well, but you put off getting an orchid because you don't think you'll have a problem finding it again. And then you, you let opportunities pass you. And then when you actually do want it, you have the money for it. You can't find it. So story of my life, but it has this lovely new growth coming off of it. And it looks super, super healthy. It does say it's blooming size, I think. Actually, it doesn't say. It doesn't say if it's blooming size or not, but I'm assuming that it is. So I'm really, really excited to see this one bloom. The other non-catacetum that I got, and I probably need to water because it's looking a little shrivelly, is a Bulbophyllum macranthum. So you can see the name right there. And Bulbophyllum macranthum had a gorgeous, this was one of those impulse buys where I saw the bloom and I told myself that I had to have it. So this is Bulbophyllum macranthum and it doesn't say whether or not it is blooming sized, but there you go. I will try to add a picture um, so that you guys can see what it looks like because it's really, really pretty. Now we get into the catacetums. This is the creme de la creme of orchids right here. So this is uh, catacetum, it's Faustii by Pileotum. I absolutely love, love, love Pileotums. They are the ones that have the super large lips, almost they're called the dinner plate orchid. And they get that name because their lip is just like huge, as big as a dinner plate. So I got, a Faustii by, or Faustii by Pileotum. And the next one I got is Catacetum Venaceum by Venaceum Red. And I don't know what that clonal name is, but there you go. And I also got a Catacetum Fimbriatum. I've been wanting a Fimbriatum for a while and Fimbriatum's one of those that's not hard to find. Clown Alley Orchids has a Fimbriatum. Sunset Valley Orchids has a Fimbriatum. There's a few vendors that have Fimbriatum, but I liked the parents of this cross. It is Spotted Sepal by Dark Sepal. And if it's the one that I'm thinking of, it had an excellent shape and form to it. So that's why I picked this particular one. The next one that I got is Catacetum blackii, and this is a species orchid, and it was super, super cool looking, so of course I had to get one of those. That's one of the ones that I wanted from Rare Earth Orchids was a Catacetum blackii, and that's one of the ones I was so sad that I ended up not being able to get because he sold out, I mean, he sold out like within an hour, two hours, so... It was really, really quick. You had to be on the ball. And the next one that I got is Catacetum. This is gonna be a miniature. Uh, well, it's crossed with a miniature. Denticulatum is a miniature Catacetum. So it's Alex, Alexis Pardo by Denticulatum. So I'm expecting it to be spotted and I'm expecting it to be a miniature size, so. And if you notice, none of the catacetums that I'm showing you guys have any new growths. So I'm hoping these ones will get on the same schedule as my other ones, which they probably will. I know it's a concern for many of you, though, that 
your catacetans aren't at the same growth pattern as somebody else's, but you really have to judge your catacetans based on your own growing conditions. So if you look at my catacetans and you say, wow, hers are so far along, or hers are not even, you know, sprouting new, I just hit myself with the tag. That was pretty awesome. Uh, you really have to go based on what your catacetans are doing. You can't judge off of what other people's, which is hard to do sometimes because you are always comparing your orchids to other people's because we're human and that's what we do. But really guys, don't be worried if your catacetum takes a little bit longer to sprout roots or new leaves. You just have to take it one step at a time because if you try to rush growth on your catacetum or you get too hasty and try to water it before it's ready, then you're facing some rot and that's never a good thing. So anyways, I just wanted to put that out there because I have been getting a lot of messages. Uh, why is my catacetum not growing? Why is mine not growing and yours is? So you really just have to take it at your own pace. That's what I'm, go that's what I'm gonna say. Next one is, that's another catacetum. I got two catacetum blacky eyes and um, that's how much I wanted that one. And I'm actually going to trade for that one. Uh, catacetum rotagasianum, dark form. So that's what that one looks like. And Mormodes tapoensis. So oh, this is my very first species Mormodes. It does look like it tried to bloom, and I'm sorry that my fingernails are like yellow and not yellow, uh, but it looks like it tried to bloom. You can see the little bloom spike there, but obviously because it was in shipment, it couldn't bloom. This is Osaka Dianum by Serheoides. I think that's how you pronounce that. So that one should be interesting. I don't even remember what that one looked like. Let's be honest. I don't I don't remember what 90% of these look like. Catacetum schmidtianum. Oh, actually, I do know what this one looks like. It is supposed to be red. So this one should be really, really cool. Um, Catacetum deuce. Vandoy. This was a really interesting and I think I was intrigued because it didn't have a bloom picture. All the other ones had bloom pictures and so I was like oh this one must be and I think this was one of their like new releases. So Catacetum Deuce Vandoy and it says non-blooming sized but you can see it has three pseudobulbs so that's interesting. I would say it's blooming sized but you know what do I know. This is um, a Cycnoches egertonianum. So I did get a couple species Cycnoches. It's hard to find species catacetum family plants because usually, like especially if you go to Fred Clark, he mostly has hybrids, of course, because he's trying to put his product out there, Fred Clark areas. But I, um, I really want to try the species orchids because... It's fun to have species, and when you breed them, you're furthering the genetics of a species. So, uh, this is Catacetum pileatum. As I said, I am crazy about pileatum. So, the name intrig intrigued me. It is red green by pink. So, I think this one will be really, really interesting. I don't know if red green and pink is the colors, I'm guessing it is. So, it would be really, really cool to have one that was like pinkish toned. I think that would be really cool. And that is all of the catacetums that I got. I hope you guys enjoyed this Redlands Orchid Festival haul. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and I will see you guys later.